This is a uh, demonstration video of uh, the Best Value Vax Active System. Uh, system components include the TRS-21 active pump. You'll need a vacuum pump, uh, some type of storage slash reclaim tank. You'll get the uh, gauge manifold, and soon it'll be the uh, MT-69 molecular transformator for CPS. To set up the system, simply all you do is start out. Um, right now, I'm, I'm just going to use this hot plate for uh, my heat source for right now. Typically, I would recommend using a hot water bath. Um, but I'm just going to use this induction top just to make things a little bit easier in the video. Um, as far as your tank, you're going to want to have that in um, ice water during the reclaim portion of it. Um, and then that is actually filled with ice cold water, but typically that should be ice water and or dry ice. Um, so just kind of using some of the things you got around the shop because um, it is going to work with the system But this is just kind of a demonstration to get people uh, kind of familiar with how to uh, set up the system and use it All right, so first thing we do is we assemble everything we tie it all down together uh, clamp it down uh, We're going to open up all the valves in the system so Everything's going to be open Your valve down at the collection base will be opened up The valve here should be opened up if you got one this isn't a necessary part of the system, but um, it's something that can be added. Uh, we want to make sure the valve's here that is open. There's no valve there. In the kit, you get a vacuum tap uh, with the hose. This is just a standard vacuum hose hooked up to the vacuum pump. Uh, so we got that plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and fire that up. What we're going to look to do is pull this down the vacuum. It doesn't require you to do um, a very long vacuum process. I uh, usually let it run for uh, any more than five to ten minutes. Um, our compound gauge down here is indicating we're at uh, minus 30. Up here we're at about minus 29.9. These gauges aren't super duper accurate, uh, but you're going to get at least within uh, uh, two and a half percent or so in accuracy. Uh, um, so I'm going to pull it down. Um, I can hear the audible noise of my pump change. And then what I do is I'll actually close off that valve on the vacuum cap, turn off the pump. What I'm going to do is I'll let this thing sit uh, for about 10 minutes. What I'm looking to do is make sure that I don't have any pressure leaks. With this system, we got a lot of hoses everywhere. Okay? There's a lot of multiple points. Uh, we don't have any faces that leak. Um, everything's done by wrench, so it's pretty easy to do. Uh, but what you want to do is try to isolate that leak before uh, you run your system. Um, now, we are also indoors. So I've got a 22-foot door behind me, uh, pretty robust. Uh, Badass fan, um, and uh, I have a uh, pretty robust uh, exhaust system. So, in the event that anything goes wrong, we're right here. It's about 70 degrees outside today, so um, if we need to, we will do that. I also got some box hands, box hands in the back ready to go, too, so we can switch those on and out if we have an issue. Um, but otherwise, I'd recommend obviously doing this outdoors. Um, okay, so it looks like it's holding pretty good. I already pre tested the system, so I know it does. This is actually not on, it is flashing. Uh, that is uh, uh, one of the new way it cooked out. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is introduce the solvent into the system. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close this red gauge here. This is the high side, this is the low side. Uh, the low side indicates the extractor side of the extraction, the red indicates your, uh, basically the back side of the compressor on the pump. Okay, so this pump. Uh, this pump itself is connected to the uh, MT69. Um, I guess I'll go through and I'll give you a quick rundown on where it can go. All right, blue connection goes straight to the top of the extractor. Metal connection goes straight to your tank. This connection, okay. So coming backwards from this because I think it might be easier to understand. I'll take it out of the tank, maybe it'll be easier that way. So the output side, quote unquote, your vapor, it's going to go to where I have this vacuum tap, where we just pulled the whole system to a vacuum. Outside of the vacuum tap, it goes to the inlet portion of the pump. On the outlet portion of the pump, it follows itself over here to the MT69 input port and the output port on the MT69 coming all the way up to the red gauge. So, vapor is fed into the pump compressed down into a liquid, and then push it in the MT69, and then back up to the extractor. Later we're gonna isolate this, so that way the fluid will flow right across, back up into the extractor. 
Um, there's a couple of different configurations out there using the MT69. You can use it uh, right as it comes out of the extractor and cool it before it gets to the pump. Uh, you can cool it after the pump. I've tried both ways. Uh, in short, I've seen really no negligible, kind of a negligible what? difference that I can't really measure. So what I would say is, um, in short, the MT69 is going to provide a, a good, cool flow of butane. Without it, uh, it seems to just kind of get, that pump gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And this kind of just brings in hot gas, and we don't want that. Um, so you'll see, without it, this would get warm with it. This gets nice and cold. I also do apologize for the noise. Is it okay? Um, okay. I do have a sight glass down here, but I'm just kind of using it to monitor where my butane is. All right, so everything's hooked up. Kind of explain how you're going to set everything up. I'm going to explain to you how these gauges are going to get set in a minute, um, but we're going to fire up the system. So, your valve open. This is open. The collection base is open. There's no valves here, so this is the only valve that's closed right now. So I'll actually open this up. What I'd like to do is I prefer to use the blue valve, you don't have to. The red valve is uh, connected to a dip tube, um, which will pull the liquid. Um, I kind of just got used to doing it this way and I like it. So I just crank that out and you can see the butane is flowing quite rapidly from the deluge down. And I will let it fill until it stops. Um, so in this tank I have about four cans of solvent. Um, so, I'm just going to let this thing fill. This tank is probably near empty. Uh, if you have a larger tank or a larger system, one of the things that you can do is at this point, we can clip on the MT69. It provides a vacuum flow, uh, about, uh, as I recall, uh, anywhere from 10 to 22 inches of mercury vacuum pull. It's not a complete vacuum, but it has enough pull that it will help pull some of this out of the tank. The only problem is, if you were to open up this valve and this valve, it doesn't know that it should pull from the tank. So you kind of got to toggle this valve to get it to continue to suck and pull through. Um, but that uh, will be kind of um, something you'll need to look at uh, when you're actually doing your extraction. If you unload this tank into it, you see water, I'm sorry, uh, solvent flow through, then you know that you have enough in the system. So anyway, um, in this case, I know that there's enough in the system for what I'm trying to do. I close off this blue valve. It's done. So right now, I have a whole bunch of solvent that has run through, it's in the collection base. What I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to turn on my heat here. I'm using 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And then what I'm going to do is go plug in this MC69 slash TRS21 combination. Put this on. Now as we said, this valve is closed. So right now what we got to do, we got to open this valve and we got to toggle it open to produce uh, about 45 to 50 PSI seems to kind of be the sweet spot. So what's going to happen is you'll see this, this is a needle valve too, so you're going to slowly just kind of wait until my valves are open, wait a few minutes and you'll get to start to see this thing flow. As you can see, you can actually see a flow right now. Um, it's kind of just flowing its way down the sides of the side glass. And as the heat starts to build up, it's going to help vaporize the solvent. And what we'll do is we'll kind of just toggle the valve so we can get to the right pressure. You also hear the tone of the pump change um, once we start really getting the solvent going. What we're doing with this valve is there is no valve on that recovery pump. So this valve is acting like the back pressure on the pump. Without the back pressure, you just throttle this thing wide open. Um, it's hard to get a real nice consistent flow. Also, you'll notice that when your pressure gauges, they get kind of real close together in the same pressure, uh, it seems to give you a pretty nice flow. This has actually got a pretty good stream going for it, too, um, for where it's set. Right now, I'm at about, uh, about 10 PSI of pressure on, on the pump. Um, now if the butane's a little bit warmer, it's obviously going to produce a higher pressure rating, but that's okay. Um, I did some earlier where I got the butane real warm. Uh, 
Right now there's no material in this column, so we're just running straight butane through it. But as I got it warmer, this pressure gauge started to increase, which was okay. It didn't really harm anything. Um, right now, my hand on this, it's very cold. It's, it's actually it's really, really cold. Um, so we're doing all right with that. Let's see if we can open this up here. You can see there's a pretty good value of solvent running through the system. If I had maybe a half tank, I'd be able to close this bowl out and need to watch it fill. It'll fill pretty rapidly too. Now, as this valve is open and closed, it's going to dictate how fast that solvent is flowing. Again, because we need a back pressure on the pump. So if I were to just kind of open this thing up all the way, Right now I got a pretty good flow going, but you will see over time being open, it'll start slowing down. Again, there's no back pressure on the pump. So we're trying to keep, create right yeah, like right now. A very good example of I killed it. Uh, there's really nothing flowing through. So I'm slowly closing on the needle valve to create the pressure required. There's the tone change. I'm going to slowly let off. Now previously when I was running the Appian system, there's a nice roll again. Uh, previously when I was running the Appian system, uh, one of the things that I noticed is Appian likes to run between about 80 and 100 psi. Uh, it's not a bad thing, um, but I just noticed that this one for some reason really likes to, low, to run at a lower pressure. Um, so it's something I've kind of had to get used to, but it seems to work pretty darn well for moving solvent to the system. Another thing you can do if you have one of the collection bases, it's like a little light to help kind of see where you're at. When you look in there, you can see the butane boiling off, uh, partially because of the vacuum, and also because the solvent is getting hit with heat. Okay. I'm just trying to give you a close-up real quick so you can kind of see we're at about uh, 10, 11 PSI. Earlier I said between 40 and 50, um, and that's typically when I'm using a little bit larger system. So I have a lot more solvent running through it, a lot more heat being built up. Uh, this being kind of already cold, it's obviously running a little bit cooler temperature, which is good. All right, so then let's assume we've provided, we've already completed doing what we need to for the uh, extraction. What I'm going to do is show you how we're going to set up the system to take it back and get it out. So the first thing I'll do is I'm done. I see my liquid go clear. I'll open up the valve on my tank. But the problem is the system doesn't know where to put it. So you start by closing off this valve. And what we've done is now we've isolated it. No. The solvent piece is going to run down this way. And now the solvent is still being pulled from here. I usually just wait a moment, kind of look at the side glass, make sure it's cold and dry. And I can close this down this way. Um, right now, I'm just going to take a peek, see where we're at down here. We don't quite boil off yet. Waiting four hours for the pump to recover this and put it in the tank. I really think that if you do have a ball valve, it's a good opportunity to pump isolate the heat moving up through the column. The pressure on the extractor too is actually just going into a vacuum. The tank is dry. Now I'm going to close that down the ball, turn off the pump, close up my valve and my tank, also turn off my heat, heat's off, alright so everything's closed up, I'm going to 
show you how little solvent is left in this system. Okay, so the whole system has been isolated. There we go. That one's done. The tank usually has a little bit more solvent sitting in it. That's it. Thanks, Tom. We're talking about a very negligible amount of butane being left in the hoses. Uh, on the uh, pump side as well, you take that one off the collection base. Again. Nothing. Take this down. And at this point, take the whole system, go outside, go vent your top off. And we'll let the butane out. Otherwise, what you'll have is a kind of a blowout if you start taking these off because we are under some pressure. Now the material itself is going to soak in some of that butane, so it's going to start building pressure too. Um, so that's why it's imperative that you open up these valves to let off the pressure. Then open up your collection base outside, and you're all set. So even for us. That's it. She's empty. That's all there is to it.